We're in a series right now called Promises. I saw, the, looked up about promises in the Bible, and, and one person uh, wrote that there's 5,467 promises in the Bible. I did not research that. I did not count that out. But I do want to talk to you about that today. I want to talk to you about being a promise keeper. One thing that I've, I've tried to do as a believer, as a husband, as a father, uh, as a now granddaddy, as a, uh, a daddy, is to be a promise keeper. I really work at that. I really want to keep my promises, and it wasn't always like that with me. When I first got born again, probably about um, in the year of 88 or 89, I was on an evangelism team in Eureka, California, and uh, that evangelism team basically, even though I wasn't on it for that time, I only went out a few times. I remember going door to door once or twice, but over the years, this evangelism team went every door to Eureka twice in praying for folks and sharing the gospel, whatever. It was a very assertive, uh, aggressive evangelism team. And uh, our leader was a guy named Mike Becker. He was an amazing evangelist. And one time we were going to New York City and going to preach the gospel in the Big Apple. People were going to invade New York City from all over the United States, so forth and so on. And I told him I was going to go. Then it got really close to it. And me being a young man, new to the faith, I just kind of shook it off and said, oh, I'm not going to go. And he looked at me, just big, kind of a big German dude, kind of intimidating, and just kicked my teeth in. And it was good for me. Because I tell you today, I remember it today because of what he did for me. A good rebuke isn't for you to leave the church. A good rebuke is for you to come, receive it, and it changed your heart. And so he kicked me right in my teeth really good. He says, you know what you need to do? You need to learn to let your yeas be nays and your yeas be yeas and your nays be nay. And that stuck with me. Yeah. To be a man of my word and to be a promise keeper, a man of integrity. And so God is a promise keeper. He wants us to be promise keepers. And I want to pray right now as we dive into this word today. I want to share some of the promises. I feel like God's got some promises for some of you intentionally in this room today, he's going he's gonna to speak to you. How many of you want to hear directly from God? He, he does use man. He wants to speak to you this morning. Father, thank you for this time, and I just ask God that you would touch lives and hearts in here. You would encourage. You would show up and show off today, God. You would knock it out of the ballpark on behalf of some of your brothers, uh, your sons and daughters, my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. does God keep promises? How many of you say yes? Are you sure? Are you sure? Good. Listen to a couple of scriptures. I, I agree with you. I believe with you. Uh, Titus 1, 2, in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie. Me and you can lie. We're liars. Ah, uh, J.L., you just called me a liar because you've lied before. Yeah. Right? We've all fallen short. That's not what we want to do, hopefully, but we do. But God cannot lie. It goes on to say, promise before time began. Hebrews 6.18, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Say that word with me, impossible. impossible. Not able to exist. Cannot. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He cannot lie. And he cannot break his promises because he cannot lie. He is a promise keeper. It goes on to say, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. It's impossible. Now, let me give you a warning. If I could just have a little warning right here, just bleep, 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 bleep. Why is a promise, why does people see some promises fulfilled in their life and some don't? Joe got it, Jerry didn't. Well, there may be multiple reasons, but I want to tell you one biblical reason that I see today that Sally got a hold of that promise. It came to fruition in her life, but Sarah, it just didn't 
pan out that way. And like there may be many levels and mysteries involved in this, but there is one that I can read in the Bible that is true and is real, and I want to read it to you today. Hebrews 4, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, there's a promise of entering his rest, why don't some people enter into his rest? Let me read on. Why do some people not grab a hold and get that promise? It's not because he's not a promise keeper. Keeper it says, let us fear, at least any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well to them. Sarah heard it, and Rick heard it, and Harry heard it, and Abraham, you heard it, but, but it, did, it impacted people differently. Wow, yeah. This is why. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed in those who heard it, not being mixed with faith. Say that with me, faith. faith. That's the catalyst. You've got to mix it. You've got to mix it up. Say that with me, mix it up. Tell your neighbor right there, mix it up. Don't let them sit there looking at me like an owl. Tell them, tell them. Get them uncomfortable a little bit. We're not comfortable at Heart of the City Church. Okay, Come on, tell them. Mix it up. you got to mix it up with faith. That word mix means to commingle, uh, to combine, assimilate, to temper together, unite together. We don't want to be like water and oil when it comes to the promise and our faith. Are you following me? We want to be more like, you know, you make those little spritzers, you put the, you know, the, the what are they called, water, help me out, help me out, carbonated water and mix it with orange juice. It makes us really good. All of a sudden, it's, it's, a, it's a cool little carbonated drink, right? It's not like water and oil. You want to mix it up. You want to combine it. You want, to, you want your, listen, your promise to be mixed with faith. And then all of a sudden, you don't even know what's, it's all united, it's all commingled, it's all together, and I tell you what, you're going to see something powerful come to fruition in your life. Now, don't sit there in your intellect and go, well, it just doesn't work that way with me. Just why don't you receive today that God might want to speak to your heart, that maybe he might want you to mix it up a little bit. We can sit there and just dissect stuff theologically. I just don't know if it's for today. Well, why don't you just step out of the boat and see if it's for today? Why don't you mix it up a little bit? And, and, and God, show off today. Mix it up. He touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. It's got to be according to your faith. I'm going to grab these promises today. I cannot make you grab it, Matthew. I can't make you grab it, Logan. I can't make you grab it, Bobby. I can't make you grab it, Risha. But I'm going to grab it. And I'm, 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 I'm picking on them a little bit. But I'm going to grab the promises of God. But my faith be it unto me. And your faith be it unto you today. And I encourage you, you just say, Jesus, take the lid off my faith today. I want every promise that you have for me. Amen. I want to be the Joe that receives. You know, sometimes, how many, we got electricians in here? Electricians? You're an electrician. Okay. Uh, be a good conduit of faith. Let me tell you, not a good conduit. You can kind of support me like Electrician, man. Uh, a piece of dry wood is not the best conduit, is it? If I got a live wire there, I'm just going to like get me a limb and just whew, get that thing out of the way, right? But I don't want to pick up a piece of copper wire and do that because I'm going to be part of it. <laughs> what happened to J.O.? Look at his hair. <laughs> you want to be a copper live wire when it comes to faith. You want to be a cop. You don't want to be a, a stick in the mud. You might get a little shocked because of the mud, but probably not. You want to be a, a live conduit, steel, metal, copper wire. Amen? Amen? There are some good conduits and there are some bad conduits when it comes to faith, when it comes to electricity. Promise number one today. I want to just go through some promises and just share in my heart and preach this a little bit if I can. If 
you are back into a corner today, and you've been back into the corner by the enemy, and you've been fighting, fighting, and fighting. I got good news for you today. Here's a promise. It may not be for everyone, but it's going to be for someone who will own it, and sometimes God just begins to, this couple right here, you was just doing your hair like that, you're a great guy. Would you guys stand up for a minute? I feel like the Lord would even come to you today, coming into this new year, that he wants to encourage your heart. I feel like he wants to breathe. He wants to take you two to another level by the power of his Holy Spirit. He's breathing upon you afresh. I think he's going to take you places that you have never been before. I think he's going to take, you better get ready. You better get ready. You better get ready. I see his touch upon you as a couple, as a family, on your children and your business. And I just sense a new presence, just a precious presence and anointing falling on you. He's going to begin to, you, you, I tell you what, you haven't seen anything yet. I believe that he's going to begin to speak to you. The things, the dreams that he's put in your heart, I believe that you're going to begin to see them come to fruition in the year of 2020. The promises, there's some things in the past that you've like, wow, I've just kind of given up on, but I tell you what, he comes to, to, to just take the dust off those areas of your life today, and I believe that he wants to come and touch your heart. I believe that he wants to bring great healing from the past, and I believe that he's going to cause you to dream again. He sees you today. He loves you, and he has a, an amazing purpose for your future. Do you believe that today? Man, he loves you. You are a wonderful couple. You are a wonderful couple, and I think, God, I think you're only scratching the surface of what God has for you in the future. Amen. Sometimes, Holy Spirit, you just interrupt me, and I'll just go with it. Amen? If that bothers you, I don't apologize. If you're in the corner, if you're in the corner, if you've been fighting, I got a promise for you today. It comes from Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight, that's got to be up there, yeah, 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 thank you. The Lord will fight for you, you need only to be still. Some of you have been fighting, and you've been fighting, and you've been fighting, and you've been fighting, marriage, or business, or health, or whatever it is, I want to let you know there's somebody in your corner, and he's not a cut man. There's somebody in your corner that's not the referee. There's somebody in your corner that's not just there to coach you. There's someone in your corner that wants to step out in the ring on your behalf and hook the enemy, jab the enemy. He wants to fight for you, but listen, you got to set still. There's other translations of that scripture. You just need to be quiet. Can I give you my translation? You need to shut up. Is that okay? I don't mean to be rude. But sometimes you just got to be still. You've been fighting, you've been fighting, you've been fighting, and the enemy has been wreaking havoc upon your life, and God wants you to just kind of step aside, go at it. Just go ahead, Jesus. Go ahead. Come on. He's Jehovah Nisi. He is your victory. He is your banner. Come on. He wants to fight on your behalf, but you got to let him out into the, to the ring right there. Come on. You've been in the 18th round for a long time, and I tell you today, if you want, come on, you got to mix it with faith. Mix it up. If you don't mix it with the faith, it, it's just going to go, whoop, I don't know who that was for. But if you, the, I'm going to own that right there. That he wants to fight for me, and he wants to, would you rather fight for yourself, or would you let, rather let God fight for you? You want to fight for your marriage, you let God fight. You want to fight for your business, let God fight for you. You want to fight for your insanity, you want God to fight for you. I want to let you know that he says, sit, just, just sit down. Be still. Be quiet. Joshua's telling them, hey, hey, we're going to walk around this city. You know what I want you to do? I don't want you to say a word. You know why he told them to shut up? Because walking around the city like this, you're like, this is going to, we're going to win because we're walking around the city. Where's my swords? Where's my hand grenades? <laughs> we're going to, Joshua, I could, I could hear it right now. He knew that they would start whining and complaining, Joshua done lost his crazy mind right there. He done lost his mind. He just, you know, I, we, we need to go back to Egypt. 
We need to go die up in Egypt right there. And, and he said, hey, 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 don't say a word. And finally they shouted and the walls came down and there was a great God is a promise keeper. Would you home, hand me that right there? You know, for Noah, 40, I'm not going to shoot it today. Because I've been known to shoot a bow in church. It's been a while. I will. <laughs> but you know what God did? Rained for 40 days and 40 nights, flooded. Just water was there for a lot longer than 40 days and 40 nights. But it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And all of a sudden, everything was destroyed. I don't know if the fish died. I don't know. I don't know. Dave, can you tell me if the fish died? Maybe you can let me know, okay? I don't know if the fish died. But everything that I knew, beasts, all but eight people died. And at the end of it, God makes a covenant. He is a promise keeper. And he put his bow in the air. If you look in the original, it says bow. I like that because I'm an archer. I'm like, God is an archer. Come on, man. <laughs> he put his bow in there. We call it a rainbow. But if you look in the original Hebrew, it says bow. If you look in the ESV, you'll see that he put his bow up there. He made a covenant with Noah and even the beast of the land. We, we're not going to drown to death ever again. Amen? Because he's a promise keeper, you guys. He's, a, he's in your corner. He wants to fight for you. you got to step aside to the one who is weary today. Promise number two. Weary because you've been fighting, wore out, feel like fainting, just want to lay down like Elijah underneath the tree. God, just go ahead and take me. If you're weary today, here's a promise for you. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. We sang about it a few minutes ago. Those who wait upon the Lord. I was uh, studying beside the river this, this week. And this, this beautiful, beautiful eagle come flying down the river. Those who wait upon the Lord, they're going to renew their strength like an eagle. You'll run and not grow weary. Walk and not faint. Those who wait. If you're weary today, I want to let you know. That when you're weak, he's strong. Gideon, I don't need all them guys. Go down. Just, hey, I want to use, listen, I want to get the glory. And he takes 300 men and he goes and fights the battle. Why? Because when you're weary and God gets the glory, he's gonna, you're going to know where it came from. You're going to be knowing that he's the one that's going to distribute strength inside of you. He's the one that's fighting your battle. He's the one that's going to win for you. Come on, if you're weary today, look to him. Number three, promise to the fearful. I think fear is the number one tactic of the enemy. Fear. I'm telling you. There is so many phobias today. They got a phobia for everything. People are struggling with anxiety. I've been in that boat. I'll tell you that right now. Fear, if you don't do something with fear, fear is like a fire. And it will just continue to consume your life and take more territory of your life to control your life. To, Fear would like to keep you at home by yourself, all alone, all up in a closet, just you and your buddy fear. But I'm here to tell you right now that God wants to move on your behalf. Here's a promise for you today. Isaiah 41.10, fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Do not dis be not dismayed, for I am your God. He says this. Three I wills. I love I wills. It's like he's just kind of making a covenant with you. He's just kind of marrying you in these areas today. He says, this is, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, if you're battling with fear today, how would you get a hold of that, that promise right there? You better mix it up. You better own it today. 
Because I'm telling you, all those promises are for those who's going to grab them, who's going to confess them. I'm going to go over that in a few minutes a little bit on how to hold on to promises. But I want to let you know today, you've got to mix it with faith if it's going to happen. Or you might as well, I might as well just read uh, three little pigs up in here. Just three little pigs, little fable. Because it's nothing but a fable. That is nothing but a fable unless you mix it up with faith. I got, I got to tell you that right now. Mary having a baby, a virgin having a baby, that's a fable. Unless you mix it with faith and then you know it's true. Because it's not a fable. Next promise. To the overwhelmed. You feel like waters is coming over your life. If it's not the water, it's the fire. All of a sudden you're standing in the fire, being consumed. He's got a promise for you. To, this is for somebody today. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through, will you say that very important word with me this morning, through? through? Don't be standing all up in the water. Don't stand out in the middle of the river. Don't stand in the middle of the fire. Don't just stand, oh, I'm a Christian, just what I must, I just, I, I just got to, I, I. no, 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 no. He says when you go through, look, look, look. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm the only one excited about this today, but I'll be excited by myself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, Jay, I've heard you done that before. Don't let familiarity get in your heart because God might want to help you in your fire today. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't fall down, if you don't bow at this idol, along with all the other gods they already developed, but this new idol, we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. Well, we're not going to bow. And they even went to this point. But if not, the king comes back tomorrow, well, if you're ready, if you're ready to bow. If you're, the, no, we're not bowing. And they said this, but if not. But if not, they, they had no assurance that they wasn't going to snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> they had no assurance. The king is upset. His face is all jacked up, sideways, disfigured. Turn, this, turn the heat up seven times. But if not, we would rather burn. They throw him in the fire furnace. Come on, I'll be with you in the fire. I'll be with you in the fire. Oh, oh, uh, I, I think I, I must not know how to add. I thought we threw three in there. <laughs> There's four. What's going on? Open the door. The fourth is like the son of God. Let me just say with you right now, that's not a fable. That's for you. If you're in the fire or if you're in the water, I want to let you know today, the fourth is with you in the fire. You don't need Star Wars force. You need the fourth with you wherever you go in the fire. Come on, Shadrach. I pray the spirit of Shadrach, Meshach. They did get burned. You know the only thing that burned on them was the ropes that bound them. <laughs> they didn't even smell like singe. Their eyebrows, their eye lashes, all good, all intact. Just those, that's what the fire of God does. Comes and breaks off your addictions. Yeah. Comes and burns off lies off your life. Comes and pulls down strongholds out of your life. But you got to mix it up. Mix it up with faith. And you'll, just like they did, they, they, they but if not, they made a decision. And God met them there in the fire. Tell your neighbor right now, just wake them up real good and say, you got to mix it up. Mix it up. If you're feeling unloved today, maybe you feel unloved today. I want to let you know, just like that couple that I prophesied over, you're the best thing since sliced bread to God. But you could sit there easily and go, oh, that's for Clark and Glory. It's not for little old me. 
that will get you nowhere with faith. You've got to grab a hold of it, mix it up with faith. Listen to the promises of God when it comes to love today. Isaiah 54, 10. Listen to this. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. He has an unfailing love for you. Not like your love. Your love is failing. Your love has a hook. You love if somebody loves you. Now, I know we try to work through that. Jesus changed our heart. But usually we have a manipulated love, a, a love with the hook. We don't have that pure agape love. He loves you with an agape love. No hook. Unrelentless, unconditional love. That's the way that we want to love, amen? We fall short in that. He goes on to say, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. <laughs> I try. Here's another one, Romans 8, 20, 38, 39. Look at this, look at this. See, you can read through the, uh, yeah. you can read through scriptures like this. Oh, I'm convinced that neither in death nor in life. Don't read the scriptures like that. Read like this. For I'm convinced. Paul's like, hey, hey, hey. I might be all up in jail. I'll write letters from jail. But I am convinced. Are you convinced today? Are you convinced today? The Holy Spirit wants to come and renew your hearts and minds today. He wants you to walk out of here convinced that you are loved. That nothing's going to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Listen to the word. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor powers, neither height nor depth, nor need height or depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you think that God loves you because you're lovable? And you're nice? And you're kind? You're, we really aren't that lovable. Do you know why he loves you? He loves you because he's love. You know why you're able to love? Because he first loved you. And he wants you to experience his love. He wants you to love. Do you know that he wants you to love yourself? Oh, J.L., that just sounds weird to me. Just love myself. I'm not saying be weird. Don't be walking around and go, oh, I just love myself and I'm the best thing. And I just Don't be weird. But he wants you to have a great understanding of who you are and the right value for yourself, because he said, it's a commandment. Love your neighbor as your... Self. Really? You think you can love your neighbor if you don't have the right understanding and care for your own self? He loves you unconditionally. I hope that you get convinced. I hope this word gets down in your guts and your heart today, that you be convinced that strongholds be tore down out of your mind and you have a great understanding of God's love towards you today. If you're attacked, all of a sudden it's like, Jay, I've been attacked. Somebody's been attacked in this room. Man, I tell you what, sometimes it feels like, somebody asked me one time, how long is the season? <laughs> I have no clue. Season may be three months. It could be three years. I don't know. I have... 30 years. What? 30. Moses, 40 years. If you're attacked today, I got a promise for you. Mix it up. Own it. it. says this, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now let me, let me read that good for you. It didn't say that a weapon wouldn't be formed against you. I want to tell you right now, absolutely the opposite of that, all hell is against you. There's hell hand grenades against you. There's hell bazookas against you. There's these things called fiery darts that's against you. But what the Word of God says, it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But you got you to gotta mix it up. You got to mix it up. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, 
you shall condemn. How many know a tongue right there whoo, can be a lethal weapon? Yeah, this thing right here is out of control. That thing right there is out. Just get in a fight with your wife. You're like, I can't even believe that come out. It's out of control. Oh, my tongue's control jail. No, it's not. It's a little, it's a little fire. It's a little rudder that tries to ruin your whole life. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Promise to the lonely today. Isn't it amazing that you can be real popular and be in a room at a party, room full of people, and still feel lonely? At least I can. To the lonely today. Deuteronomy 31, 8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. You're never alone. Never, never, never alone. Never, never, never alone. He's with you. And he's always with you. J.O., I don't feel it. I, I don't feel it. Who said it had anything to do with feelings? Any. It has nothing to do with feelings. It has everything to do with faith. If you wait on a feeling, I got to Boston you out right now. It's more than a feeling. It's faith. Listen, listen, it's faith. I went to an elder years ago when I was a young man. I says, Don, I'm just not feeling God in my prayer. He says, Jay, I want you to just begin to thank him for being there. Thank you, God, that you're here. Thank you, God, that you hear my prayers. Thank you, God. Thanksgiving to get you right into the courts and praise will get you right into the gates and all of a sudden you're right in his presence. Come on! It's not by feelings. Feelings will get you sideways. It's a walk of faith. We walk by faith, not by sights, not by smell, not by hearing, not by feelings. We walk by faith. You got to mix it up with faith. You're not alone. Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you, be strong of good courage, do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. Wherever you go, he's with you. To the one who is mentally ill today or afflicted in their mind, sometimes we read the scripture and we connect it totally to fear, and I get it, I've used it that way. But I want to read the whole scripture because I want to let you know that God wants to touch your mind today. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. Fear is a spirit. <laughs> it's not from God. But he says this. But the power and of love and of a... Go with me, church. And a... That's his promise. That's his promise. He wants to remove anxiety and OCD, and he wants to remove depression, and he wants to remove these. He wants to heal your mind and your soul. He wants to give you an absolute sound mind. Sometimes you got to fight. Sometimes he fights. Sometimes you have to dis discipline. I'm going to renew my mind. But this is a promise he has for you and I is a sound mind. I'm going to skip to this one right here, promise to the sick. Here's a promise. Sometimes it's hard to grab a hold of when you're sick to grab a hold of a promise. Because when you're sick, it's easy to articulate and read the word of God through your sickness. Did you follow that? I don't read God's word through my circumstances. Are you feeling me? God's word does not change. My circumstances and my facts do. But his word and the truth of God does not change. And here's a promise to you today. Here's a promise. You may not be walking in it right now. You may be battling in it, but it's still a promise to you. 
He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Well, J.I., I don't feel like it. Please, please, please don't go by your feeling, huh, huh Clark? I've seen Clark ball-headed, not because he shaved his head, battling in the hospital, tumor in his chest. I want to let you know, you may be in a war for your life today, but by his stripes, you were healed. Will you join with me to grab a hold of that promise today for your life? Will you? Because it's easy in the middle of the battle to read that scripture through your circumstances and through the eyes of one who is sick. We have to read it through the eyes of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, we were healed. Is there mystery involved in that? Yes, there is. Paul left people sick. I want to tell you right now, you're going to be healed here or you're going to be healed in heaven, you're going to be healed. But listen to me, listen to me. Let's believe for right here because he comes to give you life and life more abundant. Can we believe for that? Are you with me, church? Don't go PGA golf on me right now. Let's stand on the promises. I'm not going to get to all of them, but I do want to get to this one right here. Here's the promise that Jesus is coming back for you. How, you don't know. You may go out today. You may go out today, and all of a sudden you look up, and those clouds out there might open up, and Jesus come back. You don't know. You, if you knew, you'd be writing books, and you'd be like all the other crazy people who gave a date. Yeah, I call them crazy because you don't ever give a date. Don't ever give a date. That's, that's ridiculous. Could Jesus will look at your date and go, well, I'm going to change my date because he. <laughs> Here's a promise. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Tell your neighbor right now, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. I want you to watch this video right now through the eyes of an old preacher for the one who's a promise keeper to you today. Listen to this. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. 
he regards the age, he rewards the diligent, and he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. Yes, he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! That's my king. That's my king. Amen. I wonder, uh, do you know him today?